Chris John here for WordIsGodzillaPoop.com and uh, today we're playing a Call of Duty game on the iPhone. Ooh, that kind of has all kinds of weird connotations to it for me because I'm really not a Call of Duty guy and I'm definitely not a first person shooter on uh, iOS sort of touchscreen phone devices things uh, kind of guy. Um, but this isn't your traditional Call of Duty. You could almost think uh, that Blast Furnace, who made this, had made a completely different game and then Activision told them to put Call of Duty over the top, uh, quite possibly. Uh, uh, not to kind of speculate too much on how this game got made, but still. Um, because, like, basically, this game is kind of Call of Duty tactics, in a way. It's uh, it's very different. Uh, I guess the best way to to show you is to show you. Strike team. I thought this was called Call of Duty Strike Force uh, for a second there, which um, made me think that this was a kind of Call of Duty game that a Call of Duty game that had a uh, tie-in with uh, the, the popular WWF tag team of Rick Martel and Tito Santana, uh, but sadly not. Um, so <laughs> you can see at the top here I've got levels, XP, uh, it's kind of got a very Call of Duty-esque uh, progression system. Uh, you gain XP for a bunch of stuff, uh, you can then use that stuff to buy new guns, level things out, uh, change your loadout, um, you know, there's different balance loadouts for stealth, assault, balanced, you know, things like that. Um, what's interesting here is that you could see I've got two guys, Marshall and Reed. In fact, uh, I've only played two levels into this game, uh, so I guess you also get those two ghostly figures underneath, uh, DeMarco and somebody else whose name I can't read on the screen there. Chavez? Uh, I think it's Chavez. Um, so yeah, the, the idea is you have a squad here. This is squad based, uh, which is neat. Uh, also I think it is neat is if you look at the start mission bu button, it, it also flashes in time to the dum 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 of the soundtrack. That's swanky. So yeah, first thing that's different from your average Call of Duty, you have a crew. You have a squad here. Um, I've just sort of set off all sorts of alarms after a stealthy mission, and uh, now we're trying to escape from this thing here, and here we go. Okay, looks normal enough, right? Um, first person, kind of shooty, people are coming in from all over the place. Uh, not great control-wise, uh, as you can see, kind of two invisible uh, virtual control nods. I've got buttons to crouch down below. Uh, also you can see on the left and right side of the screens I can um, use that to just uh, switch between targets and it will automatically uh, kind of hone my sights on them which makes things a little bit easier. It's just kind of not, it's not that great. Uh, but you can see it looks pretty cool. Uh, it moves around at a fair odd weight. Um, it's as you would expect. Uh, it's just kind of full of these virtual buttons, uh, not ideal uh, in any real way. Uh, but I can also tap on my guy's name at the bottom and then whoosh! I switch over to this other dude who did absolutely naff all in that last fight. Um, so the thing is with these uh, first person, if I'm playing in first person, uh, the AI of my other guy is not that great and I have to constantly be pressing this button. Uh, to get the guy to, to follow me, but that's not all because if you want the, the sort of E3 demo of, of this is where shit gets real, if I press this logo in the top left corner, whoosh, I am now in this tactical oversight mode and um, I can do that at any time, pow. Whoa, we're up high, Whoa, we're down close. Uh, so it's fairly instantaneous. And this is kind of, it reminds me of a lot of the second screen stuff that we're seeing for a lot of games these days. Um, but it's all in one game. Uh, so what I can do here is click on a guy and send him into cover. Uh, I can click on this dude. 
that's I'm sure when I go into that objective it's going to trigger all sorts of mess. Uh, well, let's bring into cover over here. No, behind. There we go. Um, and more guys are coming in, I guess. Oh, I see one dude over here. So if I touch him, I can then touch that site and that will say, well, when you get a clean shot on him, uh, take that shot. I'm being kind of hammered over here. Okay, and he does that kind of automatically. Um, so that's pretty neat, isn't it? I kind of think so. It's it's pretty cool to be able to direct your guys to send them into cover. Also, if I click on both guys at the same time, or in rapid succession, I've got them both selected now, and I can send them, move them as a group together. Uh, so this kind of feels, um, you know, pseudo real-time strategy, kind of like... Um, was it Commando, the series of games on, on PC back in the early 2000s? Kind of feels a little bit like that. Or, you know, in an optimal way, like Cannon Fodder or Syndicate, but more kind of uh, self-serious. Um, this is a really neat idea. And of course, at any time, I can ping them back down. So I can deal with things in, in real time. Really, really, really nice idea. Um, Enemy aircraft inbound on your position. Roger, Alpha 1. Roger, what do we do until then? I love that joke. Stole it from uh, Calvin and Hobbes. Today just keeps getting better. Right. Eyes on target. Take point. The problem is that at some point they kind of figured, well, people are just going to be playing the entire game in tactical mode because it's a lot easier to handle things that way. Um, but then you get into situations like this. I have a guy selected. I'm saying take this shot. He is doing precisely bugger all. Um, he, the, these these chaps are really useless in sort of high pressure situations, um, and they're really difficult to kind of control very very quickly. Um, okay, thanks tutorial. I just wanted to see what that flashing thing did. Um, they're really, really useless at kind of taking the initiative when they have to do stuff quickly. Um, so it means you have to dive into first person uh, to really to get anything done. And um, then at that point, you are playing a first person shooter on the iPhone, which hey, it works, I guess. It just doesn't, even with this... Um, snap to kind of targeting system it's not altogether convincing um, you know there's a healthy amount of auto aim which uh, kind of you could say it, it eliminates skill from the, the proceedings and uh, you'd be right but it also is the only way to make this in any way playable um, so yeah it's like I kind of feel they deliberately um, kind of clutch the uh, strategy aspect of this uh, in order to make you want to play or want to use the first person view um, but at the same time the first person view in itself not that great but I can take care of him there it's like I, I just wish I could be able to more accurately let the let the AI take the initiative to take these dudes out. Um, part of the problem is uh, the game's really bad at letting you queue waypoints up. Um, so I have to kind of micromanage in a sense and do every single little thing. If they're coming up to, no, don't do that, you mom. Um, sorry, that was offensive. Uh, you know, it's really easy to tap on the wrong guy first, as I just did, and go, oh, you want me to move out of cover? It's like, oh, I want you to shoot that guy. Um, da, bro. Okay. Uh, it, it's really, ooh, graphics suddenly look really, really blurry. Like really blurry. There we go, finally. Um... They're kind of really bad at uh, doing anything that requires more than one movement. If you want to 
get them to hack a computer in the next room, for example, um, you can't just click on the computer that you can plainly see in the next room. Uh, you would have to um, tap on the door to open the door of the room that you're in, and then tap on the door to open the door of the next room, and then tap on the computer rather than have them queue those actions up with any kind of uh, sensible logic. So it, it doesn't really... As I said, it, it's kind of clutched in the, the tactical mode to make you uh, need to play uh, the, the first person uh, viewpoint, um, which is a shame because the first person viewpoint, the, the tactical viewpoint stuff here is actually pretty neat. Um, at least his smart equipment's pretty far. There we go. So, where's this other dude? Oh, I've told him to come over, but. He's kind of stuck. The, the pathfinding uh, isn't ideal. Uh, it's usually just a case of, of tap and go, um, but I can also sometimes, occasionally, tap and hold, and then I can drag him over to there, so he's in full cover from there, and I wonder whether I can just, yeah, there you go, have him. Sorry, minor, minor technical snafu there, you just you just missed like about five seconds of footage. But uh, yeah, so it's, it, from here, like there's a good idea of, okay, I'm going to put my sniper on high level and then high ground and then take care of these guys. Um, but of course, I can also swoop in and take stuff out um, uh, to get those fine shots because they won't really take the initiative of taking a shot uh, ordinarily. Um, so yeah, this, I think to be fair, this mission has a much better setup than the last mission I had, uh, which was kind of um, very stealth focused uh, for most of, of the stage. And then it went, oh, now you're being invaded from all angles. And you had to do, you had to very quickly switch to the, the first person viewpoint. Um, which just, it led to all kinds of, of confusion and it, it can be a little disorienting uh, when you switch between uh, the two modes uh, and you can, it does mean that occasionally you get frustrated, like it took me three, four attempts to get those guys to move up just now. Um, oh no, take him out. Can I? You're not going to? Uh, yeah, so it, it's kind of like not. There we go. Um, neither sort of method is really perfect, and um, I get that. Really, I do. I, I get the idea that. The thing is, as, as soon as you give people too many options, uh, or two kind of options that, of gameplay here, uh, which is a really, really interesting, really clever idea, um, the risk is that um, somebody's going to play through the entire level one way and not the other way. Um, but. I think, in a, in a sense, where they've kind of fallen down here is deliberately hamstringing one mode, the tactical mode, uh, which they could have done perfectly on a, on a device uh, like the iPhone, uh, so that it is equally as kind of not, not ideal as the take care of him, in an Al Pacino sense, there you go. Um, so it, it's uh, equally as not quite ideal <laughs> as uh, the, the first person mode, which they knew couldn't be ideal. Uh, but this is neat. This is neat. Uh, you know, I mean, this kind of idea of just gradually moving people up in tactical mode and then see if you can take him out. Ah, oh, nice. It, I mean, this stuff. Honestly, I was um, kind of going into this video having played the, the couple of levels before and gone, yeah, good idea, but, you know, just, just 
kind of bad execution. Um, but yeah, it, it seems uh, that while it's not consistently great, um, this stuff is pretty cool. Oh no, you must, I, th I think I've just dropped somebody. Uh oh. Uh, so you do go into a uh, mission with health kits and uh, once you've run out you have um, you, know, you, you have three health kits for a campaign, a batch of missions and uh, when you run out, as happens here, you have to spend in-game currency to, to get that stuff. Um, and it gives you in-game currency for signing up to crappy things and signing up to Facebook and stuff but uh, you, do get, you do get them gradually so uh, let's get 20 onto health kits and see if we can finish this mission. Um, so I can heal. Okay. And don't be stupid anymore. Let's move you over here. See, he was standing up. The thing is, um, in tactical mode, you can't tell people to go prone or, you know, uh, don't do stupid stuff. Um, you know, it, it, it's just literally a, a waypoint thing. Um, so that means that sometimes they'll do dumb things like stick their head out of cover. Let's see if we can come around this way. You're adding to the fact that uh, it's not. Contact. Eyes on. Okay, cool. Uh, adding to the fact that um, you know FPS is not ideal on iPhone uh, is the fact that I'm really bad at FPSs in general. Um, so that's kind of an issue. Oh no! Oh, I see. When people rush in, this experience kind of breaks. Because um, all my guys are sitting ducks at this point. And it's like, uh, just, just take cover, just take cover, you know, read, what's face, take cover, thank you. Um, sometimes the AI works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so that, that can be a, a, an issue. Uh, take care of those guys as they come in, read you too, and that too. Especially him, there you go. Kill him, kill him, kill him. Kill him! What are you doing? Uh, yeah, it, it's more. Oh, you idiot! I'm gonna have to jump in and, and take care of things myself, you know, uh, rather than oh, I really, really want to uh, pick these dudes up. Um, there we go. Is there anyone else? Yeah. So the the conceit. Um, to being able to do this is that there's like a UAV drone uh, that's kind of providing tactical support to everything um, and that's how I'm able to do stuff but there is that sniper there oh that's the objective okay I was gonna head around the wrong way I've got my camera screwed up so I think I should be free now to just whack him from behind. Um, so you can see the mission's fairly long. Um, I'm not, as as you see, like, the, the checkpointing doesn't, it doesn't exist per se, it's, it's more that, um, you know, you can revive people on the spot and once you're out of health kits and out of means to Procure the stop! What are you doing? Oh, okay, so that's a turret, not a sniper. Okay, so I can hack that turret uh, with one guy. So I'm gonna send Reed up and he's gonna hack that thing. There was a sniper. Oh, uh, but he's taking fire. Where is he? I don't know. What's that line coming in from the other side? Is that just a glitch? Okay. Move to cover, Reed. Idiot. Yep. Flipping idiot. Um, oh no, now I'm being assaulted again. Right. Okay, but now I've had that turret, so it's doing neat stuff. This is all so much more clever, though, than, you know, if it was just a. Um, 
if it was just hey Call of Duty Ghosts on iOS you know they, they've actually whether or not this was just an intentional hey let's make a Call of Duty game or whether this was um, you know Activision saying make this a Call of Duty game um, I don't know but but either way this is much more inventive than it would be if it was just a straight up FPS and I think for, for that you should applaud it yeah. it's great uh, oh wait, wait, wait! Oh, I didn't want to. Uh, the thing is, like you, you will kind of snap to iron sights by accident a lot of times. Um, so let's do this by tactical, I think. There you go. No, no, no! You idiot! You flipping idiot! Jeez! You've gone and got yourself shot. Um, yeah, it's just fine control and. This is the reason why turn-based strategy much better thing on touch devices than, than real-time strategy because your thumb can on occasion just be slightly too fat uh, to get precision clicking on, you know, whack that dude as opposed to wander blindly up to the side of that dude and say, hello, how are you? Um, so, yeah, it's just not quite perfect snap to shoot on you is there anything in here uh there are like these additional objectives where it's like get intel on all those filthy foreigners that you're killing um so you know there is that pop pop Got something here. Okay. Got okay. And I think that will probably be the end of the stage, I think. Typically they're like in these areas. Come on then. Who's lollygagging? Weed. Go. Um, yeah, typically it would just be like, oh, so far it's it's been a situation of here's a bunch of kill spaces, and then when you get to these gates, the left behind it ends. Yeah. So there you go. Um. So yeah, as I as I kind of mentioned earlier on, those, those levels fairly long. I mean, that took me a good 20 minutes. So yeah, admittedly, I was I was talking and blundering through it. Um, but a fairly long time to kind of commit to a for a mobile experience. It's 1932. They're, they're fairly you know long amount, hefty length to these missions. Um, but this is a pretty decent game that you can just just sit down on the couch with. And um, as I said, I. I really want to applaud this more than it's worth because here is they could so easily have just done a, a, a generic FPS uh, with the Call of Duty name uh, and they haven't and instead they've they've gone in this really pretty cool pretty neat direction it's just the execution isn't quite what it should be um, but as you saw earlier on like that that bit where we were just picking off, you know, sniping people from above with the tactical viewpoint and then switching into first person for, for sort of fine-tuned aiming. That's so neat. That's such a great idea. And I'm absolutely, you know, the, the, the most anti-Call of Duty person that, that you could uh, think of. Um, so there's a few other things that you can do. Uh, all these waypoints here are just like campaign missions that I haven't unlocked yet. Um, there's also challenges. Um, these are kind of asynchronous uh, high score things that I haven't really tried. Um, but that's, you know, it's things like earn 5,000 XP in as short a time as possible. That is a, a an optional goal that goes across game mode. So. Uh, there's a kind of uh, sense of being competitive, you know, while you're playing in, in single player. Uh, there is no multiplayer, you know, in and of itself. I guess to all of that, zooming in and zooming out uh, would be a little bit uh, too complicated. Um, but yeah, a great idea. Not 
perfect execution, um, but uh, definitely not what you would expect from a Call of Duty game on, on iPhone. So, uh, you know, if you like the looks of what you've seen there, give it a shot. Um, so thanks for watching. Stay tuned to wheredoesgodzillapoop.com in the coming days and weeks uh, for a full written review of Call of Duty Spec... No, no, not Spec Ops. Uh, Call of Duty Special Forces. No, Strike... Strike Team. Call of Duty Strike Team. Uh, stay with us uh, for more on that and plenty more games. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.